Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Andre, and I hope you guys all like pastrami because we're going to turn this AAA Angus brisket into pastrami. First thing first, we're going to trim it down like I normally do a brisket. Uh, we're going to just whip through that and then get on to the next part of this. There we go, just like that, we're done. Looks great, wasn't too bad, but there's always lots of trim. And you can watch another video of mine showing how much you actually lose, it's kind of surprising. But anyways, this is done. To make the brine, I actually did that last night. And it's been mixed and sitting in the fridge all night getting to know each other, it smells fantastic. And uh, yeah, let's get it out and I'm gonna show you, we're gonna do one thing to this to ensure the brine goes all the way through. Okay, here we go, we got the brine. This was made yesterday. I will list all the ingredients and what I did for this. It looks like a lot, but we're gonna need all this. And one way, because what we're gonna do is, uh, actually inject the brine into the brisket because I want it to go all the way through. I'm doing that because, now typically if you're at home, you're gonna take it, put it in the brine and let it sit in there all week and let the brine soak in naturally. The risk of doing that, you sometimes get a gray circle in the middle or oval, that just, shows you that the, the cure and salt haven't gone all the way through. Not a bad thing, it just, it happens because you're doing it at home and you don't have commercial equipment to actually help that process. So we're gonna take the little injector needle, inject it all the way through, but we're still going to take the brisket and let it brine all week in all this. And how to figure that out really quickly is take the brisket before you've unwrapped it, put it in a container, fill that container up till it's just covering, take it out, dump it off, and then you'll know about how much to make. It's a good rule of thumb. One thing I didn't do, I have the salt. I didn't add that yesterday. I didn't want it in there. If I would have made this, let's say an hour ago, I would have, but we're going to add it right now. Mm. Smells so good. So I'm just going to give this another good mix. Make sure that salt gets uh, dissolved. And then we're going to start injecting. Okay, here we go. I'm just taking some out. So here we go, the injector, small handheld. So we're gonna suck some up. And as you can see, whoop, just poke it in and squeeze. Poke it in and squeeze. I'm trying to do about an inch apart. Yeah, and it gets messy sometimes. But anyways, I'm gonna continue doing this. And then we'll uh, finish it off and let it go to sleep for a week. Yes, it does get a little messy sometimes. So anyways, what we're gonna do now is take the brisket, which has been injected. See now commercially, they have big machines which inject the brine all the way through to add weight, to make sure the flavor goes all the way through, it cures all the way through, but then it goes into a, a big tumbler. Basically, it's a big drum 
which spins very slowly, which massages the meat, but it's also under vacuum, which accelerates that process of the, the brine and all the flavor going through the meat and ensures it goes all the way through. We don't have that. That's why we inject it. Anyways, let's not waste any of this brine. Dump that. Dump that. And carefully get all that spice in there. Make sure we get it all in there. And I got to make a little more. There we go. Now I'm just going to cover this with uh, saran wrap, get it down in the fridge. And a week today, that's next Saturday, we're going to get this out and uh, fire the smoker up and get this thing cooked. Can't wait. Mm. Welcome back everybody. Are you ready? Fire's going, just letting the smoker get up to temperature, 225 to 250 like normal. The brisket has been in the brine all week and uh, we're just gonna go get that out and do a little bit of prep with that and then get it in the smoker. Well, everybody, it's the moment of truth. I have not peaked. I've just let this sit in the fridge all week. I'm super excited. Yeah, I had to put some plates and this tray on the meat because it wanted to float a bit. Oh, yeah. Get those bay leaves off. You don't want those. That looks fantastic. I don't normally do this, but I am patting off the meat because it's just because it was in the brine and I don't want it that wet. Looks fantastic. You can feel it. It feels a little firmer, so you know it's actually been cured, which is a fantastic thing, which is what we want. Looks fantastic. So I have the rub, and uh, we've got coriander, we've got a little bit of mustard, black pepper, garlic, and a touch of uh, red chili flakes. Just grind them up. And I just want to say we're not putting any salt in the rub because there's plenty of salt in the brine. And if you put it in here, you're going to just make it way too salty, and that's not what you want. We're gonna cook this exactly like I do any of my other briskets. I will link the a video up whichever side. I'm not gonna get into that today's video. This is just about making the pastrami. But anyways, we're gonna do it exactly like a normal brisket and then take it from there. Put it right in the front so we can see it. Beautiful. It's gonna go in and we're gonna come back, check on it in four hours. See you then. Everybody, we're at four hours and uh, let's take the first look. Looking good. A long way to go. But that's okay, we got time. Well, everything's looking good. I'm not gonna bore you guys with the whole step-by-step. -step. Like I said, I'll link a brisket video for that. Next time you see me, this thing's gonna be finished and we are going to cut in and taste this. I'm so excited and I can't wait. Another fantastic smoke has come to the end. 
the brisket or pastrami has been off for about an hour now just resting in the cooler I got it to a temperature of 203 204 Fahrenheit which is perfect again from your uh, from the unboxing I'm going to be using the shun brisket slicing I'm excited to use that too I have to say I noticed when I pulled the the, the pastrami from the smoker to rest there was quite a bit of liquid in the wrapping that is gonna happen because the meat I guess I injected there's a certain amount that will actually stay in the meat but some will leave during cooking and you have to remember commercially if you buy pastrami or roast beef or something from a production facility, like a major company, they will use phosphate and other things in the brine which adhere water and will hold the water in the product much better. I don't have that. I'm not using phosphate. I want to keep the product I make as clean and chemical free as possible so that's why it will lose water just a heads up if you're doing this yourself don't be shocked if you get that same result enough talking let me go get this and we will slice it oh, nice look at that jiggle that's what we want mm. so I'm gonna take this off because I can't work with that mm, you gotta watch that video that unboxing this thing is fantastic are you ready oh, ho, ho. look at that that is beautiful that is so juicy the color Wow, wow, wow. That looks fantastic. I'm going to do this though to give myself a little bit more room. Put that guy there. And uh, we're going to slice a few slices off. Yes, I'm slicing it a little thicker than I would if you're doing it for cold cuts, but this is still nice and hot. So beautiful. Oh, that looks fantastic. Let's uh, take one, do the finger test. Okay, it's holding. Oh, look at that. Tender, beautiful. See, pulls perfect. Mm. That is pastrami. Damn, that is good. Wow. You know what? Yes, it took a week of being in that brine. But for me, it's so worth it. It's so, it's so tender, but it still stays together, which is perfect. It's exactly how I want my brisket to turn out. Mm. That is so good. I honestly hope you guys try this. This is fantastic. I'll have everything listed below. Uh, it's got the color. I did a good job with brining it. I don't have any gray spots because you would actually see that very, very clearly where the brine didn't go. This is fantastic. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go eat now, but I can't wait for leftovers because I can slice this nice and thin, have a nice Reuben, do whatever, oh my God. But you guys have to try this. This is fantastic. Yes, it's extra work because it's gonna take you longer to prep for the cook day. But if you're doing something special, this is a total winner. You gotta do it. 
Well, thanks everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. I love showing you different things and how to do different things. This is something you can do yourself. Yeah, the wasps are out. They're bad tonight, but oh well. Guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to go eat. And happy eating.